Hey everyone, we're talking about functions, and in this video I've got a simple example so we can begin to understand what a function is actually doing. So let's check this out. Now, I've created a Python file, hellofunk.py, and that's on my desktop right now. And uh, I've got a function that I defined up here. So it starts on line one. So let's look at that in, in some detail. Line one starts with this keyword DEF which is short for define or definition and then I've got a space and then I've I've named the function and in this case I'm naming it hello you can name it whatever you want it should be descriptive in this case we're gonna print hello and it has to follow the same rules as naming variables for example we cannot start a functions name with a number and then I have a set of parentheses and inside the parentheses go the inputs to the function. This simple example will not have any inputs but we'll talk about inputs later on in the video. So I've got just nothing inside those parentheses and then I have a colon like for the if statement and the while and the for loops. So I've got a colon there and then the next line is indented. Now the first line is called the function header or equivalently the function definition. You might hear or read either one of those things. Function definition, function header. It's the most important line of the function. Without it, um, there, you know, if you make a mistake in line one or the function header, then there's really no chance for your function to be correct later on. So l l later on is the body of the function, which is indented. So you see lines two, three, and four are indented those lines make up the body of my function. So in this case, line we know what line 2 is going to do. It's going to print hello to the console. Line 3 then will also print hello, but hola, right? It'll print hola to the console. And then line 4 will print ni hao to the console. Now, outside of this is line 6. And I know it's outside of the function because it's not indented. Line 6, that is, is not indented. And I've left some space. Line 5 has is, is got a, a white space, right, to just show that block, the function block, and then these, this is outside of my function. So line 6 is what we, would, what we would say is the function call. And I'm calling the function because I've typed the name of the function, hello, hello, and I've given it those parentheses. And remember, we said something about inputs. This thing is not getting any inputs, and so those parentheses are empty. And line 7, I'm calling the function again, uh, which is not necessary, but uh, for the demonstration, I want to drive home the fact that writing functions helps us reduce lines of code. In fact, I'm going to call it again, just, just to be uh, dramatic. All right, now uh, let's uh, save it, control S, and then we're going to run the program. And we'll see what we get. In the console, it says, hello, hola, ni hao, hello, hola, ni hao, hello, hola, ni hao. Our function has run, or been called, three times. Unsurprisingly, line six calls it the first time. All right, this is our function call. And so what we do is we, we, we say, hey, hello, you need to execute. So then we come up to line one and we execute the function. So we print hello, we print hola, we print ni hao. Then we exit the function because that's the end of the indentation. Then it goes back to line seven and line seven says, hey, hello, uh, you need to execute again. So we come back up to the function uh, and then it does those three things again, makes those three print statements again, and then we exit the function, and then it comes down to line eight, and it executes the function again. Notice the li lines two, three, and four do not execute on their own, right? We did, we're used to seeing code that executes uh, starting at line one and then just kind of executes going down, but that's not the case with functions. They have to be called in order to execute. And just to uh, demonstrate that, I'm gonna clear the console and then I'm going to comment out these function calls, right? So now I've got my function defined, but I never actually call it. So I'm going to save that with Control S, and I'm going to run it. And you see it didn't do anything, or 
at least, you know, it, it didn't call the function, so there's nothing that's printed. Alright, so now I'm just going to go back to uncommenting those. And then let me remind you of what that does. That prints hello, hola, ni hao each three separate times to the command window. So some terminology again that you want to be aware of. Again, line one is the function header or the definition. And then inside the function is the function's body. And then lines six, seven, and eight each call the function. You need to be aware of that terminology. Call, definition, body. Now to emphasize one of the the benefits of making a function, I want to write a program that does this exact same thing but without using a function and then we're going to compare the two. So what I would do there in that case, I'm going to just copy and paste this and uh, I think I think I can. Yeah, let me untab that. I think there's a shortcut for that, but I'm not sure of it exactly right now. And then um, I would I would just you know copy and paste this three times, right? One, once, twice, three. And so uh, I'll just kind of show a break here. Above the dash line, right, is one program and below the dash line is the same program. It does the same thing except it does not use a function. But you see how above, you know, the first pro program one above the dash line is shorter, right, just barely, but, but you can imagine if the function did more advanced things, um, the, the above the dash line would be much shorter. But also Let's say that uh, the print function, um, maybe in Python 4, like it, we're using Python 3 here, but maybe in Python 4, uh, something happens with the print function and the Python syntax changes or something, and we have to update our code. If we update the top function, all we have to do is update lines 2, 3, and 4, because those are the ones that use the print function. But if we were going to update the bottom program, we have to update every single line. Right, and so this is kind of my now. Now the print function is not going to change, but but if it was, you know, this is my kind of uh, example to emphasize the fact that uh, updating code is easier when you use functions. It also looks nicer, right? It blocks off the code very nicely. It's it makes it more readable, I think. So I'm just going to delete this. Let's get rid of that. We don't like that. We like our new functions. All right. Now, we said something about the input, like the inputs go in the parentheses. And I'm going to make my function a little bit more advanced. And I'm going to tell the function to input something. And I'm going to use a variable name. And I'm going to actually use the, the variable name name. And so what I'm going to do is assume, my function is going to assume that the, the, uh, the, the variable that's coming in is of type str, it's a string, and it's somebody's name. And so what I'm going to do is change my code to print hello, and then concatenate that with the name, whatever comes in to my function. And let me just put a comma there and a space. And I'm going to do the same thing here, comma, space, name, comma, space, name. So you should have a good idea by now of what lines 2, 3, and 4 do. Uh, that's nothing new. The new part here is the function. So my function has an input, and remember we're assuming that it is a string and that it is somebody's name. Now when we call the function, right, on lines 6, 7, and 8, I'm going to give it an input. So uh, the input goes in the parentheses. Let me give it a string. Let me give it, um, let's say, Amanda, somebody's name. And then uh, how about on line 7 when I call the function, I will give it somebody else's name. How about Tessa? And on line 8, when I call it again, I'll give it yet a third name, maybe Darcy. 
Now, think about, if you want to pause the video, think about what is going to happen when I run this code. I'll start by clearing the console, and then I'm going to control S, save my updates, and now I'm going to run it. And here we go. We see hello Amanda, hola Amanda, ni hao Amanda, then hello Tessa, hola Tessa, ni hao Tessa, hello Darcy, hola Darcy, ni hao Darcy. What's going on here is we're reusing this function. The function prints hello, hola, ni hao. We're reusing it, but with different inputs now. On line six, when we call the function, we give it Amanda as name. So we, uh, we say that this is the input, Amanda is the input, this is some more terminology that you should be familiar with, Amanda is the input, that input gets passed, that's another term, to the function, and then um, it's like, that's what name represents now, name represents this string, Amanda. And so wherever there's a, a name, right, that name is holding the contents Amanda. So we pass the variable Amanda to the function. Right, we would call, again, we would call this an input or an argument, input argument. Then on line 7, we call the function again with an input or with the argument Tessa. So Tessa gets passed to name, right? And then we have hello Tessa, hola Tessa, ni hao Tessa. And then on line 8, yet again, we pass the argument or the input Darcy to name and then we say hello Darcy, hola Darcy, ni hao Darcy. And then that's the end of the program. So that's pretty useful. That's, that's pretty interesting I think to us. And um, there, there are much more things that we can say about functions and we'll save that those juicy those juicy details for another video. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much.